Today's video is really special because we're going to be focusing on transition effects between slides. I'm talking about slide transitions that will make your audience drool. I'm talking about slide transitions like these. Bam. Bam. And you can even go back and have the exact same transition between the slides. It is awesome. It is sleek. It is beautiful. And to be honest with you, it is really, really easy to do. Really easy to do. So let's get started. Welcome back to another video from SlideCow. My name is Yoyo, and together we're gonna make your slides look amazing. As a precaution though, you need to be aware that you need to have the morph transition effect, which is under transitions, and you know you can see right here called morph in your PowerPoint software. If you do not have this, your transition effect that I'm about to show you here will not work. On top of that, in some cases, even if you do have this, it won't work because morph has evolved over the years. So please take this tutorial with a grain of salt and please understand that not every PowerPoint version out there will work exactly the way this tutorial is intended to work okay find your own way make sure that it works just for you and make the best that you can with the software that you have but again your best bet here is to have office 365 and update your powerpoint to the latest version anyway onwards to the tutorial okay so the very first thing we need to focus on is how the slides look that means before we animate or transition a single slide or a single element or any of that stuff we're gonna have to focus on the slides design. Now, part of the key appeal to the slide example that you saw were the pictures that I used and the typography I used. So we're gonna focus a bit on, you know, how the slides uh, design looks, not too much because the, the centerpiece of this tutorial is of course the morph effect, but I still would like you guys to understand how I look at things visually, you know, and, and focus on that. So the very first thing I'm gonna bring in are these three pictures over here. These are the pictures of the footballers I used in the three slides previously. Now, keep in mind, and by the way, and I understand that these are soccer players, the American audience out there, but uh, keep in mind that there's one point of value uh, for these three pictures that the, um, all three pictures have in common. Uh, they're all PNGs, right? They all have transparent backgrounds, as you can clearly see. Let me just send this to the back, and you can see over here. That is what makes this tutorial uh, great. Please look for pictures uh, with transparent backgrounds. Uh, and you'll know you have a transparent background if it's a PNG effect and, you know, there literally has a transparent background. So please use pictures with transparent backgrounds if you want to make the same effects that I have. Um, a list of the resources I use will either be in YouTube description or in the Slack out blog post. But anyway, enough of that. Let's focus on the design. I'm going to make a brand new slide here while having these three pictures on the first slide because I'm just gonna be using this as a reference slide anyway. So I'm gonna be making a brand new slide I'm going to delete everything on here. All right, so the very first thing I wanna do is bring in Mohamed Salah. Uh, he plays for Liverpool. He's an absolute beast this season. I had the last season, he's been very, very, very good. Um, I'm just gonna keep him here for now. We'll figure out where to put him and how to play around with him later. So I'm gonna move him to the right for now. Uh, let's play around with the typography. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to insert, click on text box, and I'm gonna just draw the text box just like this. I'm gonna type out his first name, and I'm also going to change the font to a font I want to experiment with that I thought was really cool, called Galano or Jelano Grotesque. I thought it was really cool. It's a demo font, might I add, but it's a pretty cool font to play around with nonetheless. So I'm gonna change this size to 35, and I'm also going to bring this down a bit, and I'm gonna change this size to 96, where I can put in his last name, like that, right? I'm gonna blow this up to the right like this, and I'm going to, you know, bring it so that the, um, the top of the boxes line over here is barely touching the bottom of the typography, as you can see like that. Uh, sorry, the bottom of the word, you know, just just barely, just to make sure that there's better alignment. I also think there's a better way to align the, the two text boxes here because I think there's a bit of distinction between where the M starts and where the S starts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to shapes, click on line and draw down a line like this, right? And you see where my line is, is barely touching the M? I'm gonna be forcing the second box to move to the left just to do the exact same thing. That way we have a better sort of alignment technique. And then I'm gonna play it by eye. So I'm gonna be bringing this up a bit more just like that. And I think that looks pretty cool. So we have his name on there. I think a cool visual element to introduce is a square where I can just bring that at the back like this. I'm gonna make this a very bright neon green. You don't get to see that often, but I thought it's, I think it's a nice color to use um, given certain, certain circumstances, I guess. And I think, yeah, I think this looks pretty cool. Okay, cool. Maybe bring that down a little bit. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do now is bring in his stats, right? And then to do that, I'm gonna just be bringing the text box from the top, 
And I'm gonna change this team. I'm gonna change the font size to around with 15. And I'm gonna bring in another text box at the bottom here and change that to around 24. And type in his team in all caps, which is Liverpool. Liverpool. <laughs> Uh, yes, he does play for the for a football club called Liverpool. I'm also going to bring in that little shape over here, just to bring it all the way to the right here. Um, right click it, click on send to back, and there we go. Right? I think that looks pretty cool. In fact, let me just bring that down. Yep, I think that's cool. Okay, now with that one down, there are three other stats I need to put on here. I'm going to be pressing Control Shift and just dragging this down. Two, three four times and I know you guys want to jump to the transition phase of this video so I'm going to be speeding this part up really quickly all right so I'll be back in literally a few seconds okay that's done now the cool part happens I'm going to be positioning his photo on the slide I'm looking for a nice balance on the slide you know somewhere where I can say where I can see his hand and I can see his body come out and it's not necessarily cropped all around. Um, so I thought I thought this was a pretty cool place to put him. Uh, it's okay that his feet are cropped because, well, not that cropped, but I think this is a better way to putting it, I guess. Yep, this is much better. So I'm looking for a way to uh, sort of show his upper body without cropping all of his feet. But again, I just want this, it's all subjective, it really is. So I thought this was pretty cool. Um, and to add a little bit more artistic flair, I'm gonna add a shadow effect. Now I know that you guys are already screaming in your head saying, oh my God, Dario, you're actually adding a shadow effect. Hold on, relax. The shadow effect that I want to add is not as bad as you think it is. Um, in fact, I would actually recommend these if you want a sleek little effect to your pictures. So I'm gonna right click on the picture and click on format picture first. And uh, I'm gonna go over here and I'm not gonna click on the presets. The PowerPoint presets for shadows suck. Uh, what I recommend you do instead do is go to color and change it to black and just follow the settings that I have um, in order to get a cool shadow effect for your slide. And the cool settings are uh, you want to change the transparency to 70, you want to change the size to 90, you want to change the blur to around 45 points, and you want to change the, uh, you want to keep the angle 90, sorry, you want to change the distance to 15 points, right? And Already you can see that there's this cool little shadow effect here and I thought that I thought that looked sublime. I thought it looked amazing for this slide. So I thought this was this turned out pretty cool. Now, um, we're not done yet. We still have two other slides of design. Uh, in order to in order to, you know, respect your time and, and make sure that you guys get to the good stuff, I'm going to be speeding up the design process for the other two slides. I will talk about them when I'm done. All right. I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, uh, I think the designs are done now, and I think I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out. The only important thing to note uh, is that um, there might there was a slight change with how I did the header here because Neymar's name is actually a little bit different. Uh, Neymar is not his last name, whereas Salah and Messi are their last names. Neymar is his first name, and this is his last name, Giuseppe Santos Jr. So I had to be creative with how I positioned the text. But other than that. I moved the text to the right on the second slide and moved Neymar's image on the left and made it back uh, and, you know, put it back to the same model with Messi's slide over here. Overall, you can see that, you know, we have a little pattern where the, the picture's on the right and the picture's on the left and the picture's on the right. We, we tried to keep things consistent all the way through. So now that we have all our assets on the slides and the design looks great, we can now delete this and we can start transitions. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to click on the second and third slide, hit transitions and click on morph you will not see anything just yet relax okay you will not see anything just yet and there's a reason for that um before i actually show you what you need to do it's important to understand what morph does morph is a feature in powerpoint let's say a transition feature in powerpoint that will basically force powerpoint to morph you know elements in previous slides into the current slide and the best way to explain that, right, because I know what I'm saying right now doesn't make any sense at all and you need a visual representation, is to go with an example. And I'll be happy to use an example in this case, okay? Now, let's say I want to take, I, I want to use the morph transition as best as possible for this slide. How can I set up the previous slide in order to get the best transition possible for this slide with morph? Okay, here's what I would do. I would take 
Nimor, right? I would take his picture, and I would paste it in Muhammad Salah's slide. You might think you might be thinking I'm actually going insane here, but just bear with me for a bit, okay? I'm gonna reduce his size, right? The image size here, and I'm gonna be placing it over, well, I don't need two of these, but I can be placing it over, let's say somewhere over here, right? Barely visible, just barely, right? Over here, somewhere in the background, okay? Um, I'm going to be changing the artistic effects. So I'm going to be right clicking and I'm going to be clicking on format picture. I'm going to go to artistic effect here and I'm going to click on blur, right? So the blur effect that I'm going to go for, let's say it's around 30. So we can, you know, barely make out who he is, uh, but not that much, right? I'm also going to remove the shadow effect completely and I'm going to set the transparency to this to around, let's say 80%, okay? So that way I can tell that there's a person behind Muhammad Salah, but he's not the focus of this image. Neymar is the focus of this image, but you can barely see him being here. Now, why did I put him there? Okay, why did I put him in the first slide, right? It's to allow this picture to morph into this picture. Now PowerPoint will recognize that, hey, this is the same picture from this slide, that I want, so I'm going to be morphing it, right, from this slide into this slide. And to show you what I mean, if I click morph again, you will see his picture morph into it. Now I know you guys are thinking, hold on, hold on, wait, why is this rectangle moving to the right like that? Okay, again, let me explain. PowerPoint's recognizing that this shape, this little rectangle on the left side is the exact same as this, power, as this PowerPoint rectangle on the right side. So in effect, what it's, what it's doing is moving it over to the right side, just like that. You see what I mean? And now you're saying, but hold on, the age is also moving. I don't want that to happen. Okay, yes, because again, age 27, Neymar and Salah are both 27 years old. You can't really change data, can you? PowerPoint's always going to recognize that to be the same. Now there's a way around this, okay? If I was to go to, um, on the second slide at least, and go home and click on select and click on selection pane and click on age and put an explanation mark at the beginning like that, sorry, two explanation marks, not one, and try again, it should be fine. I guess that way you're setting up a unique identity for that box and PowerPoint's gonna say, oh, okay, so they're different. And there you go, that's the really cool thing. We're not done yet, we still want uh, to manipulate this slide as if we're trying to zoom in to this Neymar over here, right? And the only way we can do that is if we can get this picture to also, uh, to as if we were like zooming behind Muhammad Salah. Again, I know it makes zero sense as I'm talking about it and you're all like scratching your heads like, what the hell is he talking about? Just bear with me, all right? So if I was to take this picture, place it here, and grow this image all the way to the right, right? Let's just say something like this, okay? Now, he looks ridiculous here, I know, but more importantly, what we want to establish is that we're telling PowerPoint to morph this picture into a picture that's off the slide, but that's not what's important. What's important is the morph effect between these two things so that we can see him literally grow out of the slide and bring Neymar into focus. Do you see what I mean? So over here, for example, now, Right, when I go back here, we're looking at Mohamed Salah, okay, cool, but you can see Neymar vaguely in the background, and it's almost as if we're zooming under Mohamed Salah and now focusing on Neymar, right? So that is the effect that we're going for here. That is the transition effect we're going for. Now, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing to Messi, okay, the, the Messi slide here, the exact same thing, okay? First of all, I'm gonna be taking the Messi picture, I'm gonna be pasting it over here, I'm gonna be decreasing the size, okay? roughly almost the same size as the Neymar picture. So just to make sure that things are consistent. So, so I can delete this and paste this here, right? I'm gonna be changed, I'm going to remove the shadow. I'm going to uh, put a blur effect. I'm gonna change the blur effect to around 30 and I'm going to change the transparency to around 80%, okay? Now, will the morph effect work? Yes, it will, so that works fine. Now I'm gonna take the uh, Neymar photo and I'm going to be pasting it here and I'm going to be growing it. I'm going to move the Neymar photo out of the slide here. I'm going to click on morph. Okay, it works, but I think I don't want his his feet to show. So let's make sure that things are consistent across the board. I'm going to be using the same image height, I guess, as the Mo Salah out of canvas picture. So let's move this Go back inside. Over here, delete that. Move that there. So again, will this work? Yes, that does. But again, I don't want I don't want it to focus on his legs. Let's try again over here. 
is too low, so maybe like this. A little bit more. So as you can see, it's a bit of an iteration. So I thought this was perfect, right? So we have a picture right now where that where that works, okay? Now, um, there's still a little bit more we can do here, and 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 this is perfect. This this works fine, right? But one thing I I, I enjoy doing is is not sort of I don't like how Messi just pops up out of nowhere, right? I like to I, I like to have Messi, you know, have a purpose, you know, a, a flow to it, right? So we have Mohamed Salah, we have Neymar, and then Messi just, you know, fades in over here. Uh, that's not what I want. I don't want Messi to just, you know, fade in over here. That's not what I want to do. I want Messi to be uh, to to have a purpose in the slide, you know, an introductory purpose. So so let's try something. No, I don't want to keep my. I don't know why that's there, but all right. Anyway, so. Let's take, you know, his little uh, blurred out image. Let's paste it. Let's reduce the file size and let's just put it out of the slide canvas completely, completely out of the slide canvas. Okay. Now let's try again. If we click on morph, do you see how he slowly pops up from the ground? That's the effect we're going for. Now every single image has a purpose, right? And there's a sort of sequence and flow to it. So now we have this picture, we have this slide and it transitions to the next slide and transitions to the third slide. So I thought that was really cool. And that's it. That That's genuinely it. Do you see how easy it is to use Morph? Hopefully, uh, I've given you some inspiration to use it. There are, by the way, guys, there are tons of, of ways you can use Morph. It is literally PowerPoint's best hidden secret. I'm not even kidding. There are so many ways you can use this feature that it is almost ridiculous, right? Uh, that uh, what, what, what can be achieved with it. Um, to be honest with you, a <laughs> there's actually a saying that I have, which is, uh, you'll know if a PowerPoint, uh, a PowerPoint designer is a good PowerPoint designer if he knows how to use Morph as effectively as possible. Um, so yeah, Morph is your go-to. Trust me on this. Morph is your go-to. Um, that is basically it from me. Uh, I really, really hope you did enjoy this tutorial. And once more, this is what your slides are supposed to look like. So it goes over here, you hit right, it goes over here, it's right, it goes over here. And again, this is, it doesn't have to have follow a sequence. So if I was to go back from Neymar and then go back to Messi and then back to Neymar again, it would still work, all right? So thank you all very much for taking the time to watch my tutorial. I'm glad to be back with more awesome Slack out tutorials. I will be back with more, I promise. If there's anything you need, please do let me know. This is Yogi signing off, goodbye.